A 3 liter pressure cooker has an operating pressure of 175 kilopascals. Initially, one half of the volume is filled with liquid and the other half with vapor. If it's desired for the pressure cooker to not run out of liquid water for one hour, what is the highest rate of heat transfer allowed? As usual, pause here and try solving this problem yourself before watching the solution. This is the third example for the transient system's main lecture. The link to that 9-minute lecture, the examples on this topic, and the other lectures of the thermo course are found in the description below. From our energy balance, we have that the change in energy comes from the heat coming into the pot and the enthalpy leaving the pot as steam. The final energy is the internal energy too, and the initial energy is the initial internal energy at 1. We'll neglect kinetic energy and potential energy terms. And from the mass balance, the mass coming out, Me, will be M1 minus M2. This means that to find Q, we have to find everything else. Let's start with the masses. The mass M1 is what we have at the beginning, a combination of steam and liquid. These masses can be written as volume over specific volume, and we know that half of the volume is vapor and half is liquid. We look up the specific volumes Vg and Vf for 175 kilopascals, and with them, we can calculate mass 1. The associated internal energy would be M1U1 equal to MGUG plus MFUF. So we write down the specific internal energy values UG and UF and find M1U1. Now for M2, since we're trying to find the heat for it to not run out of liquid water, we go to the limit where it just barely does. This means that M2 is all saturated vapor. M2 would be V over Vg. From the mass conservation, we can now calculate M1 minus M2. And since the mass coming out is saturated vapor, we can look up its specific enthalpy Hg. We substitute all values we found and find that the heat is 3140 kilojoules. And this value being positive is consistent with the assumption that heat is coming in. The rate would therefore be this heat over the one hour period given by the problem. If you want to check out other examples for transient or unsteady flow systems, make sure to check out the links I left down in the description below. You'll also find the links to the other lectures of the thermodynamics course as well as other engineering courses. Thanks for watching.